want to say welcome to Lehman Avenue uh, virtual service. We're so glad everybody can tune in. Please tell your friends and neighbors uh, that we'd love to have them watching and participating and worshiping God Almighty. So let's clear our minds and our thoughts, get focused on uh, God and Jesus Christ, and uh, start and begin our worship in song with Brother Phil. Our first song this morning, number 501. 501 plays. We'll sing all verses. Oh, worship the King, all glorious above, and gratefully sing His wonderful love. Our shield and defender, the ancient of days, pavilioned in splendor and girded with praise. Thy bountiful care, what tongue can recite? It breathes in the air, it shines in the light. It streams from the hills, it descends to the plain, and sweetly distills in the dew and the rain. Frail children of dust and feeble as frail, in thee do we trust nor find thee to fail. Thy mercies, how tender, how firm to the end. Our maker, defender, redeemer and friend. <clears throat> Our song before prayer this morning, number 519. 519, please. Only in thee, O Savior mine, dwelleth my soul in peace divine. Peace that the world, though all combine, never can take from me. Pleasures of earth so seemingly sweet, Fail at the last my longings to meet. Only in thee my bliss is complete. Only, dear Lord, in thee. Only in thee when days are drear, when neither sun nor stars appear. Still I can trust and feel no fear. Sing when I cannot see. Only in thee, whatever betide, all of my need is freely supplied. There is no hope nor helper beside, only, dear Lord, in Thee. Would you bow with me, please? Our Father in heaven, as we come before you, we know, Father, there are dangers throughout this world and the coronavirus is no different it scares us at times and we ask you father to help us with our fears and let us know that peace and joy and hope come through you we know father there's other types of sicknesses in the world one that one is the spiritual sickness that this world has and we ask you father to help us as your people to reach out into our community and help where we can with the, with the lost, those who misunderstand your word. Help us, Father, to be good instructors of what you would have us do 
and what would you would have them do. Help us, Lord, with this day that we might be able to uh, be received as this being our worship to you. We ask you, Father, to be with those who are at home and help them, Father, to participate as fully as possible in this service. We ask you now, Lord, to forgive us of our sins. We make all kinds of mistakes, and we are sad in ourselves that we know we fail you at times, and we ask your forgiveness. We ask you, Father, to be with the world in general as it uh, tries to operate as close to normal as possible, but of course it isn't normal for us to be apart. We ask you, God, to let us gather back again soon here in this place that we might be able to look in the eyes and of our fellow members, your children, as we participate in years to come. We ask you now, Father, to go with us through the rest of this service and, uh, and the Bible study to follow. We pray, Father, that you will enrich our hearts and our minds and let us uh, have a full heart that our service to you has been uh, complete. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Song before the Lord's Supper this morning, number 440. 440 as we prepare our minds. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. For thee, all the follies of sin I resign. My gracious Redeemer, my Savior art Thou. If ever I love Thee, my Jesus, us tis now. I love thee because thou hast first loved me and purchased my pardon on Calvary's tree. I love thee for wearing the thorns on thy brow. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now in mansions of glory and endless delight. I'll ever adore thee in heaven so bright. I'll sing the glittering crown on my brow. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we're so thankful for the love that you have for us, and we're thankful that you displayed that love in sending your son Jesus, sending him to this earth to live a perfect life free from sin and ultimately give his life as a sacrifice on the cross. And through that death, we have the hope of eternal life. Father, 
now as we partake of this bread, we pray that we will reflect back to the cross, remember the death that your son died for us. We pray that we would examine ourselves in the way that's acceptable to you. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the cup, the fruit of the vine, which to us represents the blood that your son shed on the cross, that blood that washes away our sins. We pray also, Father, that as we partake, we will do so in a manner that pleases you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That concludes the Lord's Supper for the offering. I know we can't be together today, but uh, the offering can be mailed to the church building or the, the office is open here Monday through Wednesday from 12 to 3. It can be dropped off at that time. Let us give thanks. Father in heaven, we, we know that you are the creator of all things and all things exist because of you. And we're so blessed, Father, and we pray that as we give back a portion of the things which are already yours, that we will do so in a cheerful manner, well-pleasing to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The song before the lesson this morning, number 415. Excuse me. 415. More about Jesus would I know, more of his grace to others show, more of his saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me. More, more about Jesus, more, more about Jesus, more of his saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me. More about Jesus in his word, holding communion with my Lord, hearing his voice in every line, making each faithful saying mine. More, more about Jesus, more, more about Jesus, more of his saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me. The scripture reading will come from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 8 through 12. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 8 through 12. 
To me who am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ, to the intent that now the, the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places, according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Good morning. As you have your Bibles open to Ephesians chapter 3, if you will keep it there, we're going to come to that in just a moment. What is the church? Colin Smith talks about some very common but faulty metaphors that people have in their mind when they think about what the church is. There are some who would think about the church and as they would seek to describe it, they would say that the church is a theater, a place to come and to watch others perform. Others would say that the church is a drugstore. It's a place to come and to ease your psychological pain. Some would conceive of the church as a gas station. It's a place that simply exists to fill up our spiritual tank. Others see the church as a big box retailer, a one-stop shop for all programs for adults and for children. Some would see the church as a vacation spot, a place to go and visit without a sense of commitment or permanency. I don't know if any of us have ever had that kind of thought about the church. But even though these are common ideas that people may have, they're not metaphors that are honored or promoted in the scriptures. But there are a great many metaphors that are revealed in the Bible, descriptions, pictures that are painted of what the church is. And maybe you have your favorites. I think if I have a favorite picture of what the church is, I believe that it has to be that the church is a family. And if that's my favorite picture, I perhaps think that, that the reason that's most important to me in that is that it means that we are related to one another, yes, but we're also related to God. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 14 gives us this profound truth. He says, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, in whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he might grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be filled with power through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth, and to know the love of Christ that passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that's at work in us, to him be glory in the church through Jesus Christ throughout all generations, world without end. Amen. That's Ephesians 3, verse 14 through 21. As we look at that passage, we understand in one sense that this is a prayer of Paul. Paul says, I bow my knees. And then he says, this is what I'm praying about. But it's more than simply a prayer like we have prayed here today. Because Paul is writing by inspiration. And so this is what God intended for Paul to write. And so these are God's words. These are God's sentiments. And so while it's Paul's words... The idea is from God. This beautiful picture of the church is what God has in mind for us. And when we think about this idea that the church is a family and that these words that Paul, uh, the Spirit through Paul tells us, he's already led out with that idea. He begins the very letter by telling us that God is our Father in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. That this father wanted to adopt us into his family, Ephesians 1 and verse 5, and he wants to give us his inheritance, Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 11. And when he describes us, he speaks of us as being part of his household, Ephesians 2 and verse 19. That we're fellow heirs, that we're fellow members, that we're fellow partakers, Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 6. And the best part of it all is that this was in God's mind in the eternity before time. 
that this was always the way that God wanted it to be. When we think about the family of God, most of the sermons that I've heard are valuable. And that is that we're family to one another. And even as we speak of what we're going to speak about today, this is a part of that. That what we're going to see from Ephesians chapter 3 should make us closer to one another. But I want you to think about this question. We're part of God's family. What does that mean to God? The idea that we are part of his family, what does that mean to him? And I want to notice just three things briefly this morning. First of all, we're part of God's family. What does that mean to God? It means that there is something that he wants to give us. That's in verse 14 through 17. There's something that he wants to give us. You know, Thomas Silverstein has to be the most unfortunate prisoner in the American federal prison system. Thomas Silverstein is a man who has been spending his time in solitary confinement since 1983. He is said to be the, or sometimes has the uh, moniker of being the most dangerous inmate in federal prisons. His home life was terrible. Some say that he's a victim of circumstances and maybe even mistreatment in jail, but he killed a prison guard in 1983. It was because of his actions that uh, federal penitentiary uh, workers created the Supermax prison. And because of his actions, he has not had contact with other humans for almost four decades. If you talk to prisoners, they will tell you that the most severe form of torture is solitary confinement. Mosey Lister wrote one of our songs in our song book, and one of the lines that he says is, I don't know a thing in this whole wide world that's worse than being alone. When we think about how valuable it is to have the church through times like these, when we're socially distancing, it is that we have one another. But the Apostle Paul is reminding us of something else, and that is that we are never alone because of the presence of God. If you'll look at Ephesians 3, 14 through 17, all three personalities of the Godhead are mentioned. And then the Apostle Paul says that the Spirit of God dwells in the inner man and that Christ dwells in our heart through faith. All of this mention of the Godhead, of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, it's the picture of divine help, but it's also a picture of intimacy and of relationship. God wants to give us a relationship. He wants to give us a relationship with Him. And that relationship with Him is going to help us to be able to bear the most difficult things that we go through in this life. He wants us to succeed, to overcome, so that we can live with Him in His house forever. When you think about a relationship, you think about the individuals involved wanting to give. If you're in love, you can't help yourself but to give gifts to the one that you love. As we think about our Father, He wants to give us. Why don't we see the things that He wants to give us? He wants to give us strength, Ephesians 3 and verse 16. He wants to give us increased faith that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith, Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 17. And I don't know that I always know the answers to how He does that, but I know He does it through the means of answered prayer. We pray for strength. We've done so here already today. We know he does so through providence, through time and events. He works through others and through things to accomplish his will, part of which is to give us those, that equipment that we need to spiritually survive if we will be willing to do so. But we also know he does this through the means of one another, through the fellowship that we derive through each other. We, we value that and we appreciate that right now, perhaps like we have it in the past. But John reminds us in 1 John 1 and verse 7, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with, uh, with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, continually cleanses us from all sins. And he most certainly gives us this strength that we need through our knowledge of his word. As we fill our hearts with his word, he strengthens us. And, and that shows us what it means to God for us to be in his family. He wants to give us gifts. The gifts through faith that we find in this book are things like Ephesians 3 and verse 12, boldness and access with confidence through Jesus Christ. He gives us unity 
That is a basis of oneness that's stronger than anything else you can think about. Stronger than politics. Stronger than our uh, allegiance to our favorite sports team. Stronger than any earthly thing is what's available through Christ and what he gives us. He also gives us a shield from the darts of the devil. Ephesians 6 in verse 16. We're part of God's family. What does that mean to God? It means in the first place that there are things that he wants to give us. And chief in that is he wants to give us a relationship with him. We'll talk about how we get that at the very end of this lesson. But then second, we're part of God's family. What does that mean to God? It means that there is something that he wants us to know. Verse 18 and 19. What does he want us to know? You know, often when we use this word knowledge, what we have in mind is the knowledge of God's word. And God has always placed a premium on the importance of knowing his word and his will. You remember in Hosea 4 and verse 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I have rejected you from being my priest. Because you have forgotten the law of the Lord your God, I will also forget your children. God saying we need to grow in our knowledge. We need to know his word. But in this text, he says there's something additional that I want you to know, that I need you to know. And the knowledge of this can make all the difference as to whether you spiritually survive or not, as to whether you are a functioning, viable member of my family or not. He wants us to comprehend it. He wants us to know it. He wants us to be filled with it. And, and only by being filled with the knowledge of this can we be filled with all the fullness of God. And what he wants us to know is his love. That I may know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that I might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, what's going to happen when we know this love? Well, the Apostle Paul says it won't stay vertical. It's got to extend to the horizontal. And so in the second part of this letter, you have the Apostle Paul saying, here are these great truths about God. Now, here's what it means in your relationship with each other. I want you to bear with one another in love. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 2. I want you, even if it's painful, even if it's difficult, even if it's strange your relationship, I want you to speak the truth in love with one another. I want you to be devoted to building up one another in love, Ephesians 4 and verse 16. And I want you to walk in love, Ephesians 5 and verse 2. But what's that mean? It means I've got to be kind, tenderhearted, forgiving. Look back at Ephesians 4 and verse 32. He wants me to know. But you see, that's, all these things I just mentioned are effects. They're not the cause. We love because he first loved. And equipped with that love... Who is it going to keep us from reaching out to in love? If we get a hold of that love, of the love of God, we're going to extend that love to our lost neighbors. We're going to extend that love even to our enemies, but we are certainly also going to extend it to one another. We will fulfill that characteristic that Jesus says is the hallmark of his disciples. How do people tell that you're following me? It's your love that you have one for another. John 13, 34 and verse 35. Often people quote, and, and I, I love this quotation of Tertullian, who in his day was living at a time in which Christianity was very unpopular. And the pagan people of his day would say, when they spoke of the Christians, how they love one another and how they are ready to die for one another. This strong characteristic that was existent in the family of God drew people to Christianity even at a time when it was highly unpopular to do so. Think of the power that exists in the church of our Lord when we know what God wants us to know, and that is his love for us. But then third, we're part of God's family. What does that mean to God? It means that there's something that he wants to do for us. That's verse 20 and 21. Now, before we get there, we've got to walk backwards to Ephesians chapter 2 for a moment and remember how Paul describes us before we were Christians. We were dead in trespasses and sins. We walked according to the course of this world. We walked in the vanity of our mind. We indulged the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. That's what we were. But the grace of our Lord appeared and changed things in our lives. There's something that... God wants to do for us. He wants to do for us what we could not do for ourselves. And what he wants to do for us is far more or exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. 
When we think about what God wants to do for us, how powerful it is. When we think about things from God's perspective for a moment, every sin, that, like that mentioned in Ephesians 2, 1 through 3, is a violation of the perfect will of God. It's a personal offense against God. Let's try for a moment to put ourselves in the place of God. If you're in God's place and you're overlooking all of your creation, all of humanity, how would you feel about a people who were constantly angering and hurting and saddening you by the things that they did? If you were in the place of God, and I know it's impossible for ourselves to put ourselves there, and what would your attitude be even if people came up to you and said, I'm sorry, would you please forgive me? We're not God, but that is the picture of God. He wants us to be in a relationship with us. So often what we do is when we think about our relationship with God, we we put it in the realm of our experience with other people. What's our experience so often with other people? They don't want to let go of a grudge. They will not let us forget our past. They will not allow that we can grow and we can be something different from what we used to be. But what does God want to do? far more exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. And how does he accomplish this? To him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ. He's counting on you and me to help him to accomplish that in the lives of our brothers and sisters who are struggling and trying to grow, to be what God wants them to be, to realize their potential. He's partnering with us to do that. And he's partnering partnering with our brothers and sisters to help accomplish that in us and that's powerful and that's what it means to be in the family of God the kingdom of Tonga is a Polynesian nation that is comprised of 169 islands 36 of which are inhabited and the nation was originally known as the friendly islands because of Captain James Cook first encounter with the inhabitants of those islands in 1773 uh, Cook and his a crew and their ships uh, uh, landed there on the, the main island at the time of the Anasi Festival, which was the time of the giving of the first fruits to the Supreme Tongan chief. And so they were all extended an invitation to join in the festivities, but Cook misread the situation. You see, the reason why they extended that invitation to all of Cook and his, uh, his crew members was so that they could kill them all. But they couldn't agree on a plan. All the local chiefs uh, tried to to come together to to figure out how to do this. And some wanted to do it at night. And others wanted to do it in the daytime. Some wanted to kill Cook and lure the others in. Others wanted to do it all at one time. And so here's Cook and all of his crew who come ashore. They're weak. They're emaciated for lack of food. But no signal was ever given. And Cook thought that these folks were actually friendly. You know, sometimes we may misread other people. Sometimes we look at how people interact with us in the world, and we know that the world has ulterior motives. They may seem like they're being nice, but there's, there's some other agenda afoot. We may have even had that experience at some time in a church or with somebody in a church. But God lays all of his cards on the table. He says, this is what I want. This is what I'm after. I want you to be a part of my family. I want want you to know what that means to me. I want you to know that what it means to me for you to be a part of my family is that I want to give you something. And what I want to give you is a relationship with me. I want you to know something. What I want you to know is my love, the nature of it, the extent of it. And I want you to know what I want to do for you far more exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or can even think. That's how much it means to God. How much does it mean to me? If I am not a part of his family, what I'm saying, even if I don't think I feel this way, is that that family of God's not important to me. If I've not accepted his grace, you know, that's Ephesians 2, verse 5 through 8. He's rich in his mercy and his grace, and he wants to extend that to us. But by grace, we are saved through faith. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus under good works. 
he tells us what's involved in that in the Ephesian letter, that there's one faith. That's a, a system of, of, of works, a, a system of ideas of the truth or of the way. That faith leads us to repent of our sins, to change our lives, leads us to confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and it leads us to that one baptism of Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 5. And through this we are placed into the family of God, into that body of Ephesians 1, 22 and 23, the church of His Son. Does it mean enough to us that we have done that? I know this is being extended virtually to all but the few men that are here with me today. But if you need to make that decision to become part of God's family, I, we've seen it on social media, individuals who have made contact and have come down to the church building or have gone somewhere else and have been baptized to have their sins forgiven. It's happened among us during this time. We want you to be part of God's family. And more importantly, God wants you to be part of his family. But maybe through all of this, you've had more time to think about where you are spiritually and maybe you've not really been a faithful part of God's family. And you want that to change. And you want to, to be closer to him and to your spiritual family. We want to help you do that because you meaning that much to God, you mean that much to us as well. What a wonderful and powerful picture that God has painted for us. That we are part of his family and that's the way he wants it. May that give us the strength as we strive to live through all the challenges and the good times of life. May God bless us in that. Let's close this morning with number 700. And I chose this song because not only are we hopefully nearing the end of this time, Lord willing, but there is work to do. Pick up the phone and call someone in God's family this week. There are people out there who are struggling and they need to hear your voice. So let's, um, let's go to work. To the work, to the work, we are servants of God. Let us follow the path that our master has trod. With the balm of his counsel, our strength to renew. Let us do with our might what our hands find to do. Toiling on, toiling on. Toiling on, toiling on, let us hope, let us watch, and labor till the master comes. To the work, to the work, let the hungry be fed. To the fountain of life, let the weary be led. In the cross and its banner our glory shall be While we herald the tidings salvation is free Toiling on, toiling on Toiling on, toiling on Let us hope let us watch and labor till the master comes. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this day that you have blessed us with. Thank you, God, for the lesson that we have heard this morning. Thank you, God, for Neil's willingness to uh, give us a portion of your word. Please help us to keep in mind the extent of what it means to be in your family. Please help us as a part of your family to encourage others and uplift people in times such as these. Please forgive us from our sins as we fall short of you many times. And please help us to repent and to do better. Be it each and every one of us uh, throughout, these, throughout the remainder of these weeks. Um, and please be with us throughout this week as well. Please help us to strive to be better Christians each and every day. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.
have just a couple of announcements this morning. Um, let's keep all the sick and shut-ins and those that have lost loved ones in our prayers. Um, let's pray for each other. Uh, I know we're all struggling in different ways during this time, so let's keep each other in our prayers. Uh, Ruth Gott has shingles. Um, I'm sure she's struggling with that a little bit, so let's pray for her. Um, Harvey and Mary Stiles, they celebrate 70 years of marriage on 429 of this year. Um, also, if you, for our website, email, and Facebook, if y'all check that regularly, we'll have updates and news on that. And now I think Bobby has an announcement for us. Yes, just a couple, couple more, uh, if you, if I may. Um, it's very exciting to be here and to share a few uh, notes with you and tidbits. But yet, I'm very humbled to be part of the, your part of this church and to be part of this family. And what a, a fitting sermon! And thank you, Neil, for that. As most of you know, the elders here we meet and discuss matters of the church regularly. Uh, past Friday night, a couple nights ago, we met out at John Gott's house, and we discussed uh, many things. We met uh, minus one, because uh, Brother Riley couldn't be there with us, but uh, we was also supported by Neil and Edwin, and we're grateful for that. Much input went into several things, so just, again, a couple of things I'll share. First of all, we want to express our our thanks to you, our gratitude to you, the church family, because of all the good works, the things that you have been doing. Much prayer has been uh, verbalized and vocalized for others. We know that. You have told us that, and we've seen that uh, with our communication and notes and things like that. Visits, we're grateful for that. The acts of kindness and the things that you have done, it's very exciting and it's very uplifting. So again, we commend you for that. But also we want you to think and pray and let us know any of those spiritual needs that people may have that we can reach out and help them because, again, we want to be concerned about their soul, their salvation, as well as their physical needs. Another exciting tidbit we wanted to share, again, with much uh, decisiveness, clarity, decision-making is next Sunday. We're going to have our worship service at the Come and Trace property. So that's very exciting. We asked you to come uh, as a drive-in type service. You come in your cars, you'll be part. You'll stay in your cars, and we will worship out there at the uh, Come and Trace pro property. We, we have a, coupled with your passion, a, a, a passion to do things in this community that God Almighty, that wants us to do and we're excited about that we want to couple that with your uh, passion and and help the community to get to know jesus and so come let's uh, be part of that we'll be making history and and it's exciting times we i want to leave you with uh just a tidbit you know when uh, jesus walked on water and peter saw jesus he was he could have been very afraid and i'm sure he was at this time a lot of people are afraid but what we want to share as elders with you be of courage as long as we keep our focus on jesus christ there's nothing to be afraid and we want to tell you that as elders and share that with you so again let's grow together keep loving each other as a family do the things that god and jesus wants us to do in our community and uh, be a shining light here thank you very much